For over a thousand years, the chariot defined ancient warfare. Bronze Age armies built fleets of thousands of chariots, shaping and forging the world around them with this ancient vehicle of war. In this video, we will be examining the history of chariots, including their invention, their use, and eventually their fall. It's first important to note that around 3500 BCE, the wheel was invented in Mesopotamia. However, this wheel was not used for any form of vehicle. Instead, it was utilized as a main component in the potter's wheel. Meanwhile, the horse was being domesticated in central Eurasia. Horses were especially common in the Eurasian steppe, a strip of grassland running from Hungary to China. For a large part of history, this steppe was inhabited by nomadic tribes who engaged primarily in herding, as well as some hunting and small-scale agriculture. It was these tribes who domesticated the horse. A few hundred years later, the people of Mesopotamia began to use the wheel for a second purpose, building the first chariots around 3000 BCE. Originally, they were probably not used for war, instead possibly being used for farming, transportation of goods, or some other purpose. It was not until later that these structures would have been utilized in battle. However, these chariots were not the same as the more well-known type of chariot used later in the Bronze Age. These chariots were more like redesigned wagons. They had four solid wheels and were typically pulled by donkeys or oxen, as the ancient Sumerians had not yet imported domesticated horses from the Eurasian steppe. It is up to debate whether these can be considered actual chariots, but if not, they were at least the precursors to the more popular chariots that spread across Eurasia. These wagon-style chariots underwent a few key innovations before they became the lethal, era-defining vehicle known to us today. The four-wheel design was replaced with a two-wheel design, which proved to be more effective due to its enhanced mobility. The solid wheels were replaced with spoked wheels, which allowed for even more mobile chariots. And, finally, the oxen and donkeys were replaced with horses, which then spread rapidly beyond the Eurasian steppe. However, the fact that domesticated horses existed at this point begs the question, why didn't soldiers ride the horses directly as cavalry? There are several different theories as to why this was the case, and the answer is somewhat disputed by historians. One possible explanation is that horses were too small to reliably carry an armored warrior into battle, only becoming large enough after many generations of selective breeding. Another theory is that riding technology, such as saddles, bits, and reins, were not sophisticated enough to allow a rider to effectively control the horse in combat. It may also be that insufficient or underdeveloped training techniques of riders or horses caused cavalry during the Bronze Age to be an ineffective unit on the battlefield. While there is not a clear answer as to why cavalry was not used, it is reasonable to assume that, for one reason or another, they were inferior to the Bronze Age chariot. Over time, chariots served different roles in battle and were used in different ways. For instance, chariot passengers could be important generals or other leaders moving about on the battlefield. However, as chariots evolved and the number of them on a battlefield increased, more and more chariots came to serve a direct combat role rather than mere transportation. One of the primary risks of using a chariot in battle was the cost. Although chariots could usually move much quicker than a foot soldier, it was still possible for chariots to be captured or destroyed by enemy troops. Because of the cost in both time and resources of building a chariot and training its horses and riders, the loss of chariots could be highly detrimental. Despite this risk, generals became increasingly aggressive in their use of chariots, especially as the count of chariots and armies grew into the hundreds and eventually into the thousands. As time passed, chariot theory began to split between those who favored a strategy of mobility and skirmishing versus those who emphasized shock value and massive chariot charges. Both of these strategies can be seen implemented in the Battle of Kadesh, which witnessed a clash between the Egyptians and the Hittites. 
these two ancient empires deployed two very different types of chariot warfare. The Egyptians utilized a chariot which was light and highly maneuverable. These chariots would usually have a single archer to accompany the driver. When in battle, the Egyptian chariots would operate as ranged units, moving close enough to their enemy for the archers to get a good shot. If the enemy attempted to approach the chariots, they could easily move away, resulting in a highly mobile archery unit which could, in theory, escape almost anyone. The Hittites, by contrast, built heavy chariots. Although not nearly as mobile as the Egyptian chariots, the Hittites' chariots could hold three people rather than two. These two extra passengers would often have armor, shields, and spears, as the Hittites' chariots were not meant for skirmishing like the Egyptians, but rather designed to engage in massive cavalry charges to break formations and to rout enemy troops. The Battle of Kadesh featured the pros and cons of both these chariot styles. The Hittites showed the advantages of the heavy chariot with their massive charges that broke the Egyptian lines and threw their army into chaos. The Egyptians showed the disadvantage of using light chariots when they were unable to finish off the Hittite chariots despite surrounding them at one point early in the battle. However, after breaking out of the envelopment, the Hittites' chariots retreated south, showing the key disadvantage of heavy chariots and advantage of the Egyptian light chariots, as the heavy Hittite chariots were unable to escape the quick Egyptians and were eventually killed. Despite the many benefits of chariots, they did have multiple downsides. Downsides that would contribute to their eventual decline. Chariots, even during their golden age, had these three issues. First, they were expensive to both build and to maintain. Second, they required somewhat flat ground to be effective. And third, they required extensive special training and operation. These flaws were inherent with the chariot, but the chariot's power still resulted in it being used extensively. The real catalyst for their downfall, cavalry. Cavalry outstripped chariots in practically every way. It didn't require maintenance or construction. Horses had access to areas where chariots could not reach, and only one horse was required for each cavalry unit. Despite the diminishing use of chariots in battle, chariot racing, first established in ancient Greece, remained a popular sport in ancient Rome. Chariot races typically took place in the Circus Maximus, a special, circular stadium that could seat up to 200,000 people and was four stories tall. During chariot races, it is said that the city of Rome was virtually empty as everyone attended the events. Rules of these races were minimal and crashes violence, and even death were common. Chariot racing remained popular in both the Western and Eastern Roman Empire throughout the first few centuries AD, finally declining with the Byzantine Empire in the late first millennium. Chariots were, without question, one of the most important innovations of the ancient world. They shaped ancient warfare for thousands of years and, Though they eventually fell out of use in war, their impact cannot be underestimated.